I'm so excited to be here and talking to you all. But unlike most of you here, I believe, I'm not a technologist, I'm a storyteller. So the reasons I'm excited about blockchain, I hope they're the same as you. But I'm here to try and witness it and explain it. And I'm here tonight because I know a lot of you are also interested and excited about the potential for blockchain. I've been writing about it, um, tweeting about it for a year or so now, trying to get my head around what's going on and then find ways to tell that story and share it with the world. There are so many exciting projects happening that it's moving so fast. So um, whilst I hesitate to try and predict the future, that's a really dangerous thing. What I'll try and do is a bit of a temperature take of where we are, where I think we might be going. You can catch up with me in, in a few years' time and tell me if I'm right or wrong. No, nope, that's backwards. Right. Okay. Where or when are we now is often a question that comes up a lot in crypto. You'll see on the Twitter and on Medium, a lot of people compare the blockchain space to the internet revolution. And there's a lot of speculation and discussion. Of, are we kind of back in the 80s and the very earliest Usenet days? Or are we perhaps getting closer to something more like mass consumer adoption? Are we really on the brink of Hotmail or GeoCities when people were starting to carve out a bit of their own space on the internet? Um, because we have seen tech revolutions before. Um, in terms of the early internet, I think a lot depends how old you are, actually, is what you think of as the early internet. Because uh, I can remember the vivid excitement of the first time of receiving a message instantly from someone on the other side of the world. And that sense that information could travel freely and reach me. And that's the same kind of feelings I get now when I think about the potential for value to pass from one instant to another in a secure and transparent way. Um, so I think that the, there is a lot of debate about this. It's not a perfect analogy at all to compare the blockchain revolution to the internet. Things are happening at a very different speed now. I heard someone the other day describe crypto years as dog years. So that completely blows all the numbers. Comparisons out, the, out of the water. It does mean that we've all got long, illustrious careers in blockchain, if you like, because we can double it, well, times seven, and call it dog years. So to me, it doesn't matter whether you think we're in 1989 or 1998. I'm going to suggest another lens to look at it through anyway, and suggest actually we should be comparing to 1849. We're at the start of a gold rush which is really exciting. It's a bit of a wild west out there. Now, in California in the 19th century, people traveled from all over the world to stake their claim in this, this new, exciting potential. People rushed in to try and claim physical land space, but it's different now because in, in the blockchain, what people are staking their claim on is ideas. The territories that people are securing and laying claim to, it's an intellectual territory. And actually, people are coming from all over the world again, just as they came from New Zealand and China to California. And the interesting thing is now that it's actually shifting the balance of power in the financial world quite significantly. And places like the US and New York, because of the stifling regulation, are getting left behind. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see financially just kind of where the power lies, how the world looks in another 10 years. Again, not going to try and predict the future. But what people are doing is staking claims to intellectual territory. We're talking about gen genomics as an excellent example of how the blockchain can be used to really granularly control access to information and make it incredibly user-centered. There are some amazing ideas out there. People coming in and so basically people want to build the blockchain of or build X on the blockchain. Some of the ideas that come to us as a marketing agency um, some of them are absolutely fantastic. Some of them become clients. Some of them are a little bonkers. Some of them are completely off the wall, and I can't even talk about them because they often go on to actually launch anyway, whether we have anything to do with them or not. There are things that are now happening on the blockchain that, whether they actually need a blockchain or not, I don't know. So this is what I'm saying. But it's happening. It's where everybody wants to be. It is a gold rush, and there's a tremendous sense of energy about it, and people are hurrying to the scene. Now, when revolution when action gets ahead of, of maybe some of the regulation, maybe the technology speeds ahead of everything else. There are risks. And Natalie introduced us at the very beginning to the idea that you have to 
be self-sovereign, you have to protect your assets. And I would say if you're thinking about investing and dabbling in some of the more speculative projects, you really have to be aware that there is potential great reward, yes, but great risks, and you are on your own with it. There is no blockchain help desk you can ring up if you mess up. Uh, there are bad actors. There are some incredibly exciting and interesting projects, but they're having to make their way in a really brave new world, staking their claims out there in the gold rush territory. There are bad projects, frankly. There are things that are outright scams in the beginning, but there are some incredibly solid projects that then get infiltrated in their communities. There are people, um, I think was talking about bots passing off as different accounts, people trying to get you to send, send your private keys to them, to do all sorts of things. So because it's so exciting and because the potential is so huge, Basically, I think in my time working in the industry, I've seen the best and worst of human nature, um, the best and worst of ideas. So you really, really have to watch your back. There might not be actual guns out there. Um, people are staking their claims by marketing and good fundraising. But there are very real dangers out there that you have to protect yourself against. And the reason for that is there's gold, great piles of it. Um, I think. When I was preparing the notes for this, it was a week or so ago, and over six trillion raised in ICOs in 2018 alone so far. That's already exceeded the total for 2017. So anyone who says that initial coin offerings are over, it isn't yet. The money is still pouring in. There's an awful lot of it, and that have, that's, of course, why it attracts scammers and chances and all walks of life. Cowboys from all over the world. Um, in amongst all of that, who's actually finding the gold and getting rich. Well, there are some very sound businesses and projects. It, it is an incredibly fast-moving space, and it's easy to forget that things we now see as very established within the industry, within the cryptocurrency ecosystem, started off as ICOs, Ethereum, Dash. These are currencies that we now trade and interact with daily. They all started as token sales. Um, EOS, raising all their billions earlier this year. I suppose the jury's still out on that one. But there are a number of successful businesses who have managed to raise their money, have managed to launch a business properly and run it. Um, the statistics for any new business aren't great. I, mean, I think it's something like less than 10% are going to survive and be profitable. You do have to be extremely careful. But there are success stories already. Um, there are less successful outcomes going on in this wild west of the blockchain world. There are people who manage to raise a lot of money and then blow it. There are people who have fantastic ideas for these amazing niche solutions that are of genuine needs, but then they actually don't know how to build a business. They might know how to build a blockchain, but they might not know how to deliver the solution. There are people whose ideas didn't need a blockchain in the first place. There are people whose ideas are so niche that they're a solution looking for a problem and so on. So even if you manage to not back those, you do need to be very, very careful about the team behind the project you want to support. Have they actually run a business before? Can they deliver? It's your money. Um, so just be careful that they're not going to end up wasting it on gin or, or whatever that cowboy um, has gone for. Another area you might want to think about investing or working, taking your own career into, is infrastructure. Now, to me, this is where it gets really exciting because there are all these tokens, but we're actually building a whole new world there with this, this revolution. It's way more than the tokens. So... I mean, you could say that my business in marketing communications specialising in blockchain is an example of the kind of picks and shovels industry rather than going out there with a spade and trying to dig our own gold and supporting other people who are doing that. And within cryptocurrency, there are so many different possibilities of infrastructure. And I'd see that's where things are exploding in 2018, particularly. We're seeing decentralised exchanges. We're seeing new blockchains launching their own mainnets so people can build distributed apps on top of them. Um, we're seeing aggregators of ICOs. In fact, if you're wondering where to invest now, there are a number of platforms you can go to where they do a little bit of that due diligence for you, not taking away your responsibility to do your own. But, and they can aggregate the KYC and so on on behalf of the project. So that kind of thing. Another huge area for in terms of infrastructure is industrial custody. There's an awful lot of research going into building solutions so that people can safely store their crypto because you know, we're talking about that first few hundred that you buy and you might have it on a ledger or whatever, but to get the real money in, to get the institutional funds in, then people are going to need more robust solutions than that. So there's some very exciting work going on in big money custody. 
What's going to happen in the future? What are we going to look back on this time, this gold rush? And we'll all be able to say we were there, we were part of it, but I wonder what the landscape will look like, what will still be with us and what things will be in the past. What's the legacy going to look like? Transcontinental railroads is one of the few things that still come out of the California gold rush. And a certain kind of um, blue cotton trousers did very well out of it and actually built a legacy brand that's still with us today. It just happened to be particularly hard wearing in the gold fields. So my challenge to you all as technologists is what's your legacy going to be in blockchain? Where are we going to be looking back in five years, in ten years to say, what have you built? What challenges did it solve? Now, there are, as I say, some amazing solutions out there, some of them in search of a problem. It is very sexy to be involved in solving niche social problems, but I challenge you also to think about the basic everyday needs. What we all need is mass adoption. We, every single one of those 900 ICOs so far this year, they're all competing with each other and cannibalizing each other's telegram communities and so on, but actually they all share one single objective, which is to get more people involved in crypto. If everybody in this room can introduce one person. Natalie showed us you only need five minutes to explain <laughs> this is how you buy your first bit of crypto. You can, you can get a little bit of your money out of fiat and into crypto. That could be your legacy. So I would ask you when you're developing, when you're planning to think about, not just about the big social problems, but think about paying for things every day. Think about building for the woman next door. Think about my mum. How has my mum going to use crypto? Um, build something that she can use. So. I think the future is very exciting, and I think it's brilliant to be part of it. I think if everybody can just think about helping one other person get on board, give them a bit of Litecoin on a cold wallet, on a paper wallet, and say, figure that out. Go ahead and have a look, see what you can do. Get yourself involved, get into crypto. Each one teach one, and that's how we'll support all of our projects and everybody's careers, and we really will change the world. So we're all part of the revolution. Thank you very much.